Hi, welcome to the last five minute physics of the week. And I hope this one may actually be five minutes. I've received a bunch of requests from people to talk about quantum entanglement and faster than light travel communication. Not faster than light travel, but faster than light communication. So I wanna give a brief discussion. I've talked about some of this uh, in various places before online. Um, entanglement is one of the weirdest aspects of quantum mechanics, which in fact was first pointed out uh, in a paper by Albert Einstein and, and his uh, collaborator, uh, Podolsky, uh, and they were pointing it out as a bug of quantum mechanics. It's actually become a feature rather than a bug. Uh, but it is strange, spooky action at a distance. There's no doubt about it. The quantum world behaves strangely. And the idea of entanglement is, if, if I prepare an initial quantum state, then later on in the future, things you can measure with it may seem impossible. And the simplest example is, is take a state with, involving two spins, two spinning particles, one spinning up, one spinning down, namely one spinning in one direction, basically, and the other spinning in the other direction, so that, so that together their spins cancel, okay? It's, it's called a spin zero total state. So I can create that state, and the point is that this, when the spins are, are counter each other, uh, what, what I know in quantum mechanics, as I've talked about many times, is that, um, that they're doing many things at the same time. The spins are opposing each other, but uh, they're actually pointing in all directions at the same time until you measure them. If I measure them along, say, the z-axis, then I'll find out um, that either this spin will be up and that one will be down, or that one will be down and that one will be up. The, the, the system is in a superposition of those states. And, the, and if I measure the system that way, I'll find out one of them will be pointing that way and one will be pointing that way, or one of them will be pointing that way and one of them will be pointing that way. They're doing many things at once. That's one of the weird aspects of quantum mechanics. But what makes it weirder is if I separate those particles and I ensure that they don't interact with the outside world, that their carefully prepared state is maintained, then that quantum state, that quantum coherence, as it's called, is preserved. And I can move those particles from one from here, the other one in Alpha Centauri, and they both are pointing in all directions at the same time, but they're always, spins are always opposing, which is weird. But even weirder is if I measure this one suddenly to be pointing up, then this one instantly is pointing down. It's in that state. If I measure this to be pointing that way, this one is instantly pointing that way. So if I, measure, if I have a measuring apparatus that asks me in which direction this spin is, up or down, um, then if I find this one up, this one will be pointed down immediately. Not at the speed of light, but immediately, even if they're a million light years apart. Now that is crazy. And part of the craziness is that this is a quantum coherent state. We tend to think of these particles as separate objects, but as long as we preserve the quantum coherence, it's a single state. Like it or not, that's the case. And, that, and Einstein didn't like it. He called it spooky action at a distance. But, uh, but now we can use the idea of entanglement to, to uh, work on objects like quantum computers or, or uh, error testing and all sorts of things, and, which I may talk about at some time, and I have talked about before on, um, on Science Matters. But what this suggests to many people is that you can do faster than light communication. Because if you have two objects that are entangled, the, the state of this one that you measure will instantaneously attack the, affect the state of this one. And the point is you can't. And there's a simple argument why. It's a kind of cosmic catch-22. And, 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 uh, and the argument goes as follows. Well, let, we, I want to do the experiment here. I have a, I have a dice, and it's not loaded. And um, uh, I'm going to try and put this a little bit even better so maybe you can see the table that it's at. There we go. And um, uh, I'm, I'm going to uh, roll the dice. And if the dice goes from one to three, I'm going to say the particle that I've measured, m particle A, is spinning up. And the particle B in Alpha Centauri has to be spinning down. If it's four to six, then this one's down and that one is spinning up. And I want to record what the two observers will see if they do measurements. Both measure um, independently, happen to be measuring particles. And so let's see what happens. Okay, I'll announce to you what happens. Okay, six, so that's, part, that's pointing down. So that's, we'll call that a zero for particle A and, and a one for particle B. Another six, zero, one. Two, one, zero. Calling spin up, 
uh, one and spin down zero. One, so that's spin up for A, zero for B. Two, one for A, zero for B. Three, one for A, zero for B. Two, one for A, zero up for B. Four, zero for A, one for B. And that one fell on the ground, so we won't count it. Two, one, zero, and one more will do. Three, one, zero. So what do we have here? We have a series of measurements for A and B. Now the point is, when, once A measures zero, we know B will be one. Once A measures zero, we know B will be one. Once A measures one, we know B will be zero. This instantaneously affects the state of particle B. But what will the two experimenters, who are not in communication with each other, see? They'll see, see a random series of numbers. And this one will be random series of numbers. And if I, did the, if I flipped the coin and it wasn't loaded a million times, they'd see about 500,000 ones and 500,000 zeros, and so would this person. And the point is, even though this, this measuring this particle affects the state of this particle, this observer here sees nothing different than he or she would if they were, um, if they were just measuring the particle uh, without being connected to any other particle. So even though the state's affected, it doesn't affect the measurements. The only way that, observer, that the observer B can, can get any sense of what's happening is if A phones observer B and says, oh, I've just measured zero, you're going to measure one, and lo and behold, observer B will measure one, etc., etc. So the only way that th the fact that these particles are entangled can allow communication is if you have communication itself already uh, by a phone or something else that's less than the speed of light. So even though the states are entangled, the measurements different observers make will, will not show any signs of entanglement. You'll still get the same probabilities that you would get out of any normal quantum system. So that hopefully is a small, short demonstration of the fact that while entanglement is really weird, and we may talk about it more another day, it's not so weird that it allows faster than light communication. That isn't possible. And that is the end of this week of five minute physics. And today we're closer to five minutes. And by the way, before I get any, any text about my hair, but my hair, I didn't go outside for a haircut. I stayed inside, but I have someone here who loves me who cut my hair. Thanks.